Born in 1957, Dangote grew up in an entrepreneurial household in Kano State, Nigeria. He was raised Muslim and lived an upper-class life. Dangote's grandfather, Sanusi Dantata, was once named one of the wealthiest people living in Kano. So as bad as people always want to tell a grass to grace story, that was not the case with Dangote. He had good, good money backing him. Having spent much of his childhood with his grandfather, Dangote quickly became interested in the world of business. He once said this in an interview. I can remember when I was in primary school, I would go and buy cartons of sweets and I would start selling them just to make money. I was so interested in business even at that time. At age 21, Dangote graduated from Egypt Al Azhar University, considered one of Islam's most prestigious universities. After graduating from college in 1977, Dangote managed to convince his uncle to lend him money to start a business. The funds from the loan allowed him to import soft commodities at wholesale prices from international suppliers. Two of his main imports were rice from Thailand and sugar from Brazil. He then sold those items in small quantities to consumers in his village at a lucrative markup. The venture quickly became successful and turned into a cash cow. In an interview with Forbes, Dangote claims that on his best days, he was realizing a daily net profit of $10,000. This allowed him to repay his uncle in only three months. In 1997, Dangote realized that acting as a middleman was a very costly endeavor, so he built a plant to produce what he had been importing and selling for the previous 20 years – pasta, sugar, salt, and flour. Over time, the group began to import bulk cement into the Apapa and Portacot terminals, which is then backed for distribution. In year 2000, Dangote acquired Benue Cement Company. In 2002, he acquired Obajana Cement from Kogi State Government. In 2004, he then commenced the construction of the company's first cement production plant, Obajana Cement Plant. In 2007, he commissioned the Obajana Cement Plant with two production lines and capacity of 5 million tons per annum, making it the largest plant in Sub-Saharan Africa. In July 2010, Dangote changed the name from Obajana Cement PLC to Dangote Cement PLC. Today, the majority of Dangote's fortune comes from Dangote Cement, which produces 45.6 million metric tons of cement every year and operates in 10 African countries. Now let's dive into the reasons he is hated. After all his hard work, right from graduating from university at the age of 21 to starting his business alone at a very young age, why is the world's richest black man not seen as an object of inspiration? Number one is because he is believed to be a ruthless businessman who plays very dirty. Dangote Group once released a statement alleging that their competitor, the BUA Group, owned by Rabi Abdul Samad, was stealing and illegally mining limestone at mining sites in Obuokpela, Edo State. It was reported that Dangote did this in an attempt to drive a viable competitor out of business, which was not his first time of doing such, as he had also allegedly used his influence with political helots to shut down a better cement and other competitors that got in his way. Another reason Dangote is hated is due to the privileges he has when it comes to tax exemptions and holidays. If the field is leveled and other businesses enjoy what Dangote enjoys, Dangote may not even be among the top 5 richest men in Nigeria. The third reason Dangote is hated is because he's been said to be a master in predatory pricing. Dangote controls enough of the market that he can just casually slash his prices to squeeze out his competitors and put them out of business. He will then return things to their previous prices when he's done. It's been reported that he has done this multiple times. So don't be deceived by that calm innocent look. Dangote is not as nice as he looks. As Nigerians, we are said to pay the highest for cement in the world. Available data shows that Nigerian cement firms have the world's highest profit margins, with Dangote cement having margins of 45%, where margins of major cement producers in other countries in India, Germany and Mexico range from 1% to 14%. Another reason is hated is because of the price of its products in its home country. We pay higher for cement than other African countries he exports to. Of course, your country people will not like you very much, so you are giving them the highest prices possible while subsidizing prices for other countries. 
Dangote is also a threat because he is said to have the government in his pocket. During the August 2019 to December 2020 border closure, the Nigerian government gave only Dangote the approval to export cement to West African countries through Nigeria's land borders, which was quite unfair to other businesses that didn't have the special connections Dangote had. Now, many people have said that if Nigeria had solid antitrust and anti-monopoly laws, Dangote would just be an average Joe in the business world. Many people have also made the bold statement that you have better luck learning about business from the guy who runs a fruit stand down the street than from Dangote. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And don't forget to come back next week for more interesting videos about Nigerian companies. Thank you so much for watching.